Most people in America are raised with the concept and understanding that in general our human nature requires the association with other people. We are raised in the free thinking society that our children should go off to school instead of being homeschooled, usually, unless there's a reason, a condition that it's safer for the child to be at home. And openly they need to do this so that they have proper socialization for going on into their adult life to produce a productive member of our society that can care wonderfully and successfully for their own life being employed to produce income or business revenue for their life and future families and children and their legacies. Now having say, said that, we also have to look at the aspects of homelessness that come out of, out of impoverished communities and the real facts of life. That there are people living in homelessness that are good people, and there are people living in homeless and poverty that are bad people. And there are people living in those conditions that have vices and vanities and vandalism and violence within them. Because in some cases they have such bitterness and such arrogance that they literally abuse the people trying to help them. So we're going to talk a little bit more about cautions in trying to help people outside of your legal liabilities of buying something for them. But the easiest way to get the right thing for a person is to ask them, is there something you need that I could purchase for you that would help you today or along your way? Now that is a question that I add to the questions I've already shared with you in several previous audio casts on homelessness from my own experience of being an educated person that came from an affluent community that never thought he'd be homeless. I've also been an interactor, a journalist, an opinionist, a columnist, and a reporter and recorder of life living in homelessness with other people that come from totally different socioeconomic and moral backgrounds. Now, having said that, I want to put out some caveats and warnings. That there are people that you think you want to pick up and take home with you and provide a life. That is a very rare situation that I have found, that when people pick people up to take them home, they often take, take home the mass murderers and not the people that would be totally perfectly mannered guests in their home. At the same time, people often abuse that, that they try to bring someone home with them and then they lie to themselves or someone taints their good moral con, um, ideology of trying to help someone and a neighbor or a friend or a family member says, don't do that, you'll be in trouble, you'll be, you'll be harmed, you'll be, and then it totally destroys the person's life because instead of saying, hey, you can stay here for a couple of days, but after that be on your way, they'll actually pick up the phone, they'll call a police officer, they'll call mental health, they'll call social work, they'll call some shelter, and they'll just totally fuck the life of the person they were allegedly trying to help. Now having said that, I want to go back to the safety and sanctity of your life in helping someone who's homeless. I have often seen that elderly people who are lonely, and typically women who are sort of motherly in type, will pick up a homeless person who has a marvelous talk and allows that person the ability to hear them squawk. A lot of women want to save men in particular, and a lot of women want to use financial abuse to gain sex for their life in a misuse of power with men. At the same time, there are men who are homeless particularly blacks, and I have to say that, but it's not entirely only them, who will hitch themselves up in a hookup with someone of a variety of ages who might not particularly be someone who is often pursued in matrimony every day to have a place to live. And then all of a sudden you find that this 20-year-old, large, tall, actually handsome enough to be a model black man is dating a white woman who's in her 30s or 40s and actually driving her car and living with her. Now I'm not trying to be improper and I'm not trying to be immoral and I'm not trying to be offensive. But what I'm saying is that there is a way to access whether or not that person is really a good partnership of any kind for you or your family, your relatives, your neighbors, people who are in a part of your overall moral and professional and personal social or spiritual network. 